Hi there. If you're watching this, it's probably August or September of 2023, and as you may have heard, the GRE is changing. As annoying as this is though, the bottom line is that you don't need to change the way that you study or the way that you use this course. That said, because we're right on the cusp and some of us are taking the old version and some of us are taking the new version, I thought I'd take a minute to walk through exactly how the test is changing and give you all of the information that you need. The first question that you might have is why? Why is the GRE changing its format right when so many people are taking it? And the short answer to that is competition, specifically with a test called the GMAT. So business programs, MBAs, accept both the GRE and the GMAT as acceptable standardized tests. They're kind of like the Coke and Pepsi of, of MBA admissions, right? Um, and recently, the GMAT changed its format and made itself shorter, so the GRE is just following suit to compete. That's it. So what we're going to do now is walk through the changes, and we're going to use exactly what is on the ETS website. So this is straight from the horse's mouth, right? So let's just get to it. On the left side, we have the current GRE. On the right side, we have the shorter GRE. Some people are calling it the enhanced GRE, but it's kind of the opposite of enhanced when you think about it, right? We're just taking, taking material off of it. So the first thing to know is that thousands of graduate business and law schools accept GRE scores for their master's, MBA, JD, and PhD programs. Now, this is very important to know. I have heard that some programs specifically a, a certain school in Cambridge, uh, are not going to be accepting new the new version of the test for this cycle. I don't know what's going to happen in future years, but I would just say if you are on the cusp of applying to a program, really, really do your homework about what schools accept which tests. That's all I'm going to say about that, right? But going forward, what I expect is that all the programs that accept the current version of the GRE will eventually accept the shorter version of the GRE. Maybe not this cycle. Okay, uh, the skills measured, same on both tests. As we're going to see, the content of the test is not changing at all. It's the exact same content. It's just a little bit shorter. The question types, both have the same question types with one exception. The GRE does not have an analyze and argument essay task. So we're getting rid of one of the essays. But everything else, every other type of question will still appear on the test, okay? Uh, duration, the shorter GRE is significantly shorter, right? And we're gonna see exactly what's being cut from here. Uh, the, the old version or the, the current version is three hours and 45 minutes long. The newer version is one hour and 58 minutes long. Big, big uh, decrease in time. Okay, so let's look at the structure. Here's where things change. On the old version, we write two analytical writing essays. On the new one, we're only writing one. So that's a half hour gone, right? Because each essay is one half hour. So right up top, it's shorter. We're still going to have two verbal and two quantitative reasoning sections. However, instead of 40 questions on each, on uh, excuse me, 40 questions total for verbal and 40 questions total for quant, we're going to have 27 questions total for verbal and 27 questions total for quant. Now, the test will still keep the adaptive scoring element. And in another video uh, in the course, of course, I, ex I explain that. So that's not changing. The only thing that's changing, I, I can't emphasize this enough, the only thing that's changing is that we're losing questions, right? There are 13 fewer verbal questions and 13 fewer quant questions. Here's another big change that I think a lot of people are going to like. The old or current version, right, of the test has an unscored experimental section. It is the bane of many, many GRE students. The good news, it's gone. There's no more experimental section. So no more gamesmanship. Again, in the course, I explain what the experimental section is. Uh, I'm not going to go into that now, but just know that there you don't need to worry about it on the new version, right? Um, there is a break on the old version. Uh, you don't get that break on the new version, right? So it's hour and 58 minutes, basically the length of a, a full-length feature film. Uh, the availability is exactly the same. The fees are exactly the same. The test-taking experience is exactly the same. And the calculator is exactly the same. That's it, folks. So the question on your mind right now is, well, which one should I take? Should I wait for the shorter GRE because it's easier and has fewer questions? Or uh, should I take the current one? 
And I can't answer that on a, on a video for everybody. The, the, uh, the answer to that is really going to depend on your particular situation. But here's the sort of general advice that I'm giving. Uh, if it is early in August right now when you're seeing this video and you're doing very, very well on your practice tests and you're getting the score or the scores that you want or very close to the scores that you want, maybe just go ahead and take it, right? You can always retest with the newer version. Uh, but if you're just getting going now, right, and you're, there's still a lot for you to review, then I would lean towards the shorter version. Again, the other consideration, which, which I can't make for you, is the particular uh, intricacies of whatever programs you're applying to. Harvard Business School has said they are not going to accept the new version this cycle. So just be aware of that. That's it for the differences between the two tests. If you have any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to reach out. Testprepstudios at gmail.com. Again, that's testprepstudios at gmail.com.